And so the first thing that I heard were comments from teachers and students who had come out of the exam. And my inbox was flooded with comments and questions, you know, and I hadn't even seen the paper at that stage. But overwhelmingly, I would say that the impression I got from those comments was that it was a really hard exam, you know, words like diabolical and terrible and um, you know, way different to anything we'd ever seen before. But um, but when I finally got it and had a look at it, I thought, you know what, I don't actually think it's that bad. I think it's, you know, I actually thought it was quite, I kind of liked it actually. I, I think that certainly the multiple choice section was, I think, very predictable and, and quite good. The first seven questions of the short answer section, I think were, were fairly much what I, I might have expected. There were certainly some interesting questions in there and some questions that had deviated from what had been in the exam in the past. Yeah, look, I think, I mean, there was, there were some interesting questions, I, I think, in the, in the short answer section. There was a question about eucalypts and two different groups of eucalypts that were genetically different to each other. And it was really a question about sympatric speciation. And that was interesting. I'll comment on something. It's a couple of things about that question I thought that were interesting. One was that it was about sympatric speciation. And the study design specifically says, in relation to sympatric speciation, that the example students need to know is the Howier palms. So, and there's, I, I think it's a mistake to look at the study design and think, well, VCAR says students need to learn about the Howier palms. So the only example we need to show them is that, right? Even though VCAR is saying, yes, they have to know about that example, they need to be able to take what they've learned about sympatric speciation and apply it to other new situations. And that's exactly what this question did. You know, it was a question about sympatric speciation, but in eucalypts, not in how are your palms. I don't work for VCAR, so this is not, you know, I've got no inside knowledge, but it just, my, my sort of casual observation is that the shift over the last few years, in fact, and seen most clearly in this exam, is that VCAR doesn't just want students to learn a whole bunch of biological facts and terminology. What they really want is for students to think like scientists. And so those key science skills like research methodologies and experimental method, they have, I think, risen. The number of marks apportioned to that in the exam has risen over recent years. I, mean, I think doing lots of past exam papers is still a really, really good thing to do because there is, I mean, the bulk of the exam is still content knowledge and a lot of it is, you know, you are able to almost rehearse for, you know, and, and so, I mean, I know a lot of students when it comes to things like, like selection, a, a lot of teachers tell students that you can pretty much practice how to explain selection. And, and in a way you kind of can, but, you know, again, there was a question on the exam here where if you did that, if you use a rehearsed, in fact, it was, I think it was the same question, if I remember. Um, it was, it was the same, it was exactly further down, but in the same question, as they said, you know, explain what led to the genetic diversity between the two distinct groups of trees. And, and VCAR's comments were that a lot of students just gave a rote kind of memorized explanation of how natural selection produces genetic diversity in two different species. But they made the point that the question starts with them being two different groups already. So you didn't have to kind of explain how that happened. So, so yeah, you know, students needed to take what they learned about selection and apply it to a situation that was actually already with the starting point that they were two separate groups, you know, and it was just interesting that VCAR made that comment. So I think that doing practice exams is great. Like they, you know, the more, the better, actually. It's a great way to, for students to test their knowledge, but they need to, you know, it needs to do more. I mean, for students who are listening, you know, asking questions, trying to think of complicated, difficult questions and, and putting those to your teacher in the classroom so you can have those really meaningful conversations sort of stretches the boundaries of what you learn there. Another, another thing that I've noticed happening in, in recent years, but probably most in this year, is that questions are becoming increasingly open-ended, right, where there's not just one right. Like I remember going back some years ago where most exams you could say, you could look at it, it was like a three mark question. And I could look at it and I could say, oh, well, these are the three things they're going to be looking for in that question. And there are still some questions like that, but there's a growing number of questions where like they, they are, it might be a three mark question, but in the assessment report, VCAR have given about seven or eight different things students might've said to get the mark. 
And, and some of those are the hardest looking, like those are the questions that students have done the worst on, right? Where there's the most different things you might've said to get the mark. I suspect that a lot of students get there and they think, well, I don't really know what the right answer is. So they skip it. If they had have had a go, they, they probably might've got the mark because VCAR, if you have a look at it, accepted a wide variety of comments. Some of them that I don't think are even really quite right. Like they've been actually quite generous in what they've accepted. Like, which surprisingly, you know, they've asked a question and I thought, oh, well, this is the answer. And they've suggested several different answers. Some of which I don't think are even right. Like there was one question where they showed two different monoclonal antibodies bound to two different epitopes on the HER2 receptor on a cancer cell, on a breast cancer cell. And, and the question said, you know, what can you say about the variable regions of those two monoclonal antibodies? One of them was trastuzumab and I can't remember the other, the name of the other one, but you know, what can you say about the variable regions of those two monoclonal antibodies? And I looked at the picture and well, the, the two antibodies were stuck to different parts of the receptor, different epitopes, which to me says that they have different antigen binding sites, different variable regions. This is what a monoclonal antibody is all about, is it binds to one epitope on a, on a target protein. But VCAR accepted that, which was the correct answer, that they must have different variable regions because they're attached to different parts of the receptor. But they also awarded marks to students who said they must have the same variable region because they're attached to the same receptor, which is categorically wrong. But VCAR accepted that and awarded a mark for it anyway, which I think is, a, it's again, unexpected because normally VCAR is really quite, quite strict about what they accept, but it seems like they're accepting a kind of a range of answers as long as you wrote something and justified it. So again, there's a message in that if any students are listening to this, you know, is don't leave any questions blank. Like if you get to that question and you don't know the answer, write something because it's quite likely, you know, there was a multi, it was even a multiple choice question where the correct answer I think was D, but they also accepted A, which wasn't correct. But it must be that, I mean, quite a few students chose it anyway. They must have sort of thought, well, yeah, it's maybe not so distinctly wrong. So they accepted A or D, you know? So again, <laughs> you know, I think it's just madness to skip questions in the exam. Increasingly, because you get a mark for saying not only the correct answer, but sometimes things that are, you know, different. Yeah. Anything overall where you looked and went, oh, that was a really low hanging fruit, like, or that's an easy concept that a lot of people get wrong every year. What a shame it happened again. Like, yeah, I know you always have great ideas that you share at the study fest sessions around that. Yeah. Well, I always think it's interesting to look at the, like in the multiple choice section, especially all the whole exam, but especially the multiple choice section is very easy to do is to just look for the questions where there's sort of like a, a really low number of people have got the right answer and because those are interesting i mean obviously if only a very small number of people have got it right it's something that is difficult to understand or that it's commonly misunderstood or you know maybe even the teachers don't cover very well in class you know or, or whatever um and it seemed to me in, in this one that there were a few multiple choice questions that that stuck out like that as having really low um really success rate. And they were almost all about the immune system, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, I mean, there were a few that were, I'd say fair, not really low hanging fruit. I mean, you know, I don't think there were any really easy questions. There were some that were fairly straightforward, but in terms of hard questions, I always think it's a really great idea to look at the assessment report and to look for any questions that have like the show that most students didn't get it right. Or I mean, anything in the fifties, I mean, you got to think, a multiple choice question. There's only four responses. You're going to pick something. So you'd expect 25% of people to get it right if it was written in a foreign language. So the fact that it's in English um, and it's about a subject that students have studied, you know, if only 50% of students get that right, to me, that means it's a, it's a hard question. And if less than 50% get it right, then it's a really hard question. And there are a few questions like that. Um, you know, so there was a question about relative dating that only 55% of people got right. I would say that that's a difficult question. I would have thought it was a fairly easy one though. If I was teaching or studying biology this year, I would be having a very good look at those questions to make sure that I know why people went wrong. And to that point, here's a really good exam technique. <laughs> I love this exam technique. 
a really good exam technique that you can do now better than ever, ever before, because this assessment report was, I think, VCAR's best ever in terms of its helpfulness. It, every single multiple choice question is explained. They've explained in words why the correct answer was correct and why some of the other answers weren't correct. And the short answer section, explanations for almost every question, as well as comments saying what students often did wrong on the question. And, you know, in previous years, there's been a little bit of that here and there, you know, a few questions they've come. But this one, almost every question, they've given a really helpful explanation of the correct answer and insight into what students did wrong. So here's the great exam technique would be to have students do a question, but before you even really discuss it, or maybe if you, you could tell them what the right answer is, but a second activity would be to get them to try to predict what students would commonly have done wrong on that question. So, I mean, this is like hats off to VCAF. You know, there's some things that we don't like that VCAR does, but in terms of this assessment report, it's great. Like it's, it's the best assessment report I've ever seen them produce in terms of its helpfulness as a study tool. Anyway, the last multiple choice question that I wanted to comment on was question 36 and um, it was about Homo Naledi. And that was a weird one. And that one was weird because this is what it says. It, sh it says it shares common features with Australopithecus and modern Homo species. And I found that really weird. Like when I looked through the exam, I thought, what do they mean by modern homo? Like modern means current. And there's only one homo species and that's homo sapiens. Modern homo species is weird since there's only one. Why don't they just say homo sapiens? I think a lot of students would have looked at that and thought, were they talking about homo sapiens and homo neanderthalensis which are relatively modern even though one of them has been extinct for a long time and was a contemporary of homo naledi incidentally too so homo naledi and homo neanderthalensis are kind of about the same age so if if we're comparing naledi to modern homo species we're presumably not comparing it you know, i mean they're both extinct right and they're both fairly recent I, I just i don't get it but i think that they must have been meaning homo sapiens I think part B was mostly good, especially the first part of part B, you know, so questions one to seven, I think were fairly straightforward. You know, I think what we've seen over recent years is that the size of individual questions has, has kind of grown. So, you know, I remember back, I wasn't probably all that many years ago. But I remember a time when, you know, the most marks you would have for a question were probably three, you know, and usually that was about natural selection, maybe four, you know, but, but on this exam, you know, and the last year's one too, but this one, especially a lot of questions that were, you know, three, four, five marks, almost like little mini essays, you know, with, with the one question, you know, explain something, five marks, you know, and, and I think that. Again, it, it's, it's changed over the years, but just when I looked through this exam, I thought, really, five marks for that? You know, that's, that's interesting. But again, when we're thinking about exam technique and getting ready for the exam, because I think this is a trend, it's not something that's, it's not just a one-off. I think we're seeing sort of a change in the style of the exam that probably will continue. So students need to practice writing out longer form answers. And more important than ever now is to look at the number of marks that a question is worth because you'll, you know, an assessor marking your exam will have to find things in your answer to award those marks to. So, you know, it might be a five mark question and there might be 10 things that VCAR has have said, you know, will accept these things, but they're still going to have to find five of those 10 things in your answer. So it, it's Sometimes it seems like a simple question. It's just asking one thing, but a five mark question, well, there must be a lot more to it than what it, it really seems like. So, you know, a, a, again, and there were a bunch, I mean, there was photosynthesis questions worth three marks. You know, there was a question about comparing C3 and C4 photosynthesis that was three marks. Then there was a separate question just about C4 photosynthesis that was worth three marks. You know, there were two questions about measles that were each worth three marks, you know. So, so like we're, we're getting sort of a symp the sympatric speciation question was worth four marks. Like that's massive. Like I, I think in years gone by, it probably would have been done in two marks. But, you know, they're wanting, I guess, more full 
detailed answers now. So, you know, we need to be practicing answering things in longer form.